वेलकम टू मास्टरिंग डेटा ब्रिक्स फॉर डेटा इंजीनियर कोर्स इन दिस कोर्स वी विल बी लर्निंग डेटा ब्रिक्स इट्स कैपेबिलिटीज एंड हाउ टू यूज डेटा ब्रिक्स प्लेटफॉर्म एंड अपाची स्पार्क फॉर सॉल्विंग डेटा इंजीनियरिंग प्रॉब्लम बट बिफोर दैट I want to give you a quick introduction about the data engineering. We want to understand what we do as a data engineer and what we do in the data engineering project. So we are on the common understanding and on the common concept what is data engineering, how we do it. And then we jump into learning how we do it using DataBricks platform and how we use the capabilities of DataBricks platform and Apache Spark. So Let's start with the introduction of the data engineering. This is the diagram which I took from Google Cloud documentation. And this diagram represents all the people who directly or indirectly interact with the enterprise data. Right? So what they say, they classify all the people who are interacting with the enterprise data into three categories. The first category is known as business data owners. The second category of the people are known as data engineers or data engineering teams. And finally, we have data consumers. So what they do and how do we separate them into three groups? It is purely based on what they do, right? So what business data owners do, they develop and manage operational systems for the organization or for the enterprise. For example, banking applications or e-commerce applications, OTT applications, IoT applications. Basically, these are the applications with which your end consumers or customers are going to interact on the day-to-day -day basis. So these are operational systems that operationalize organizations' day-to-day -day business. But why these guys are known as business data owners? These are business data owners because they capture business data, customer data through their customer facing applications. So these are the people who capture and collect data from your end users, from your customers. They capture it, they collect it, they save it and keep it with them. So that's why they are known as business data owner. The Last in the chain are the data consumers. What do they do? They are responsible to optimize, grow and monitor the business on day to day basis. So these are the people who are responsible for optimizing the business. Right. And then they are also responsible for growing the business, grow the revenue, grow the number of customers, grow the products, grow the sales all those things. They are also responsible for monitoring and generating reports for tracking different kind of matrices and KPIs. And they develop those systems which are targeted for either optimizing the business or growing the business or monitoring the business. Some examples are uh, listed here like fraud prevention. It's a business optimization uh, solution recommendation system it is for growth and then different types of sales and revenue reports for tracking the business and these are the business data consumers why they are known as consumers because they want to build all these systems based on the organization's enterprise data right so they need data to take data driven decisions and build data driven applications but data is collected and captured by the business data owners. So how data should reach from these business owners to the data consumers? That's where data engineering team comes into play. So what we do as a data engineering team, we collect data, we transform data and facilitate the consumption to the end users or the end consumers. So for data engineering team, these data consumers are the customers. The data engineering team gets requirement from these guys and then start working backward from those requirements to identify from where I can collect the desired data. And then they collect data, 
from these systems, bring it in their own possession and once they have the data, once they collect the data, then they do a lot of transformations and processing to prepare the data according to these guys' requirements. Once data is prepared, then finally we facilitate consumption for these guys, for the systems that they are building. We are data engineers or we are learning, learning data engineering. So we sit in the middle and we facilitate or connect data owners and data consumers with the data. That's what we do as a data engineering team or that's what data engineering projects are all about. Most of the data engineering projects are connecting these two teams with right set of data at right frequency at right time. That's all. But how do we do it? That's the next thing to understand. How do we do it? What are the different functions of data engineering? What are the different approaches for data engineering? So let's try to understand that. If we try to classify or categorize data engineering projects into smaller functions, then we can easily and broadly classify or categorize it into three functions. The first function of the data engineering project is data integration or data ingestion. In this function, we collect data from the source systems because data is with the data owners in their source systems. So the first activity or the first function of any data engineering project is to collect data from sources and bring it to the data engineering team. We own that data after collecting it. So we collect and bring data in our own possession so that we can perform rest of the activities or rest of the functions effectively. The second function of the data engineering project is the actual data engineering or data processing. The majority of the activity is performed here and this is the most complex part of any data engineering project and that's why we call it data engineering itself or data processing. Some people call it data transformation. So most of the activities are performed here to prepare data according to the requirement of our end consumers or our customers. Once we have the data prepared according to their requirement, then we want them to consume it. And for consumption, we may have to prepare data marts or design some analytical stores so that the, these end consumers can easily and effectively consume data. They will always have some kind of requirement that we want data in this model or in this format. So the last function of the data engineering project is to model data according to the requirement of our end consumers and facilitate the connectivity so that they can consume the data. That's what we do in a data engineering project, we do three things, ingest and collect data, prepare or process data and model and facilitate data to our end consumers. Other than that, we have three approaches in a typical data engineering project. Some projects or some data engineering projects or requirements are uh, implemented using batch processing approach or batch data engineering approach. Some projects may require a real-time stream processing approach and some others may require a near real-time stream processing approach. So I hope you already understand difference between batch processing, stream processing and near real-time stream processing. So we have three approaches for implementing data engineering projects. So we understand what is data engineering, where do we stand? Where do we fit in an enterprise? What we do? And we also understand what are the different functions of the data engineering? What are the different approaches of data engineering? But for doing all that, we will need a kind of architecture or a platform 
for implementing all the data engineering projects. So let's try to quickly understand what is the reference architecture for a typical data engineering project or for a modern data engineering project. Let's try to understand that. So here is a diagram that represents the modern data engineering project or data engineering platform architecture. This is also known as lake house medallion architecture. Let's try to quickly understand what this architecture means and what it says. So we already learned the first function of the data engineering project is data ingestion, data collection or data integration. So the architecture diagram represents that here. First thing we do data ingestion or data integration and for that we might want to use some specialized tool which are best according to our source system. Right. So we choose some suitable tool to ingest and collect data and that data ingestion or data collection can be done using one of the two approaches. It could be done using batch data collection approach or streaming approach. In batch data collection approach, we collect data at regular intervals, maybe daily, maybe hourly, maybe every 30 minutes. In streaming in data ingestion approach, we collect data as quickly as possible as it is being produced at the source system. So we collect data continuously. So the architecture supports both type of approaches, batch approach and streaming approach. So we collect data either in batch mode or in streaming mode or mix of both. Some part, some data we can collect in batch mode some data we can collect in streaming mode so up to here is our data ingestion or data integration and after that the architecture recommends building rest of the system in layers the minimum number of layers are three so the architecture represents three minimum layers for your data engineering uh, project First layer is known as bronze layer. The second layer is known as silver layer. The last layer is known as gold layer. So you should have minimum three layers. So bronze layer is supposed to store your raw ingested data as it is ingested, right? So we ingest or collect data and keep the raw data here in a bronze layer. We call it the bronze layer. And rest of the solution is starts from the bronze layer. So we read data from the bronze layer, do required processing, transformations, data engineering activities, improved high quality data. All that we keep in a separate layer. We call it silver layer. And then the final work, preparing data for consumption, fill, filling your uh, results into the desired data models is done uh, in a separate layer and this layer is known as gold layer. So the idea is you ingest data and keep implementing your solution step by step over these layers from bronze to silver to gold. And that's uh, how the lake house medallion architecture uh, recommends. And these activities you can perform either in batch mode, you can do in near real time mode or you can do it in real time streaming mode. All three approaches are uh, supported and can be implemented using this architecture. Now the last question is how do we implement this lake house medallion architecture? What are the technologies involved there? What are the technology components? How do we build it technically? That's what the course is all about. In this course, we will be learning how to implement this lake house medallion architecture using Apache Spark and Databricks. So we'll start uh, from there uh, in the next lecture. See you again. Keep learning and keep growing.